and we're moving on to what to do in an emergency. So there's a photograph taken in the UK on an Atlantic 85 lifeboat last week. Sit on top kayaker, got caught out, offshore winds, fell off the kayak, couldn't get back in. And thankfully, uh, a bystander on the shore raised the alarm. Uh, they didn't have any means of raising the alarm themselves. So extremely lucky to survive this one. So um, I'm going to just repeat something I said earlier on. You've got to learn to trust your instincts and your gut feeling. And that's something I place a lot of emphasis on. I take a lot of pride in developing and maintaining that skill. But you've got to learn to trust that. The moment that you feel things are wrong in the water, you need to act immediately about it. Um, and maybe not to go off on too much of a, a one about this one, but one thing I have noticed in recent years since the likes of camera phones and GoPros have been invented, that people are developing um, a, a kind of a, a cautious approach to calling the lifeboat or the Coast Guard, that they're worried they're going to end up embarrassed or on TV and so on. You need to forget about all of that. If it's not right, call immediately. We'd far prefer to come out when things are you know, going relatively well for you, but you just need a bit of help rather than leaving it going another hour where people might be in serious trouble. It is up to you to try and remain as calm as you possibly can. If you do that, you're going to conserve energy. You will survive longer in the water. So you can train for that. Rely on your training. Get out regularly, like my friend Brian there, as I said, get in the water, you know, practice getting wet, capsizing and remounting your kayak, doing that in benign conditions where you've got supervision to help you. Now, we could spend the whole evening going on about the effects of cold as well. So just in very brief terms, there's a course I run uh, called Sea Survival Skills for Kayakers, and it's a bit like an SAS training course, but we bring people to the edge of hypothermia in a very supervised condition with a medical professional um, with us. And it's amazing when people come back off that course and say, I didn't realize I could get so cold so quickly. So think about this. You're out kayaking. We'll say outside summer months now, for example. Uh, if you come off your kayak, you probably have 10 to 15 minutes at most where you'll have the use of your fingers. So that means you're going to need to operate your phone, your flares, your PLB, get your gloves on, get your hat on immediately. Because once you go past that time, you are going to start to shiver and you will not be able to function using your hands. So you need to think about your clothing and how you cope with the effects of the cold. So have processes designed to deal with it. Like I said, act fast and decisively. Get the phone out, get the PLB out and use it immediately before it's too late. And then you need to think about your leadership of others in the situation. So if you're a parent here tonight um, that might be bringing your children out, uh, sit on top kayaking, or maybe you're a, a kayak fisherman leading a group, whatever it might be, it may be up to you to lead the others through that situation. We're, we're talking about fight or flight here. How are you going to be uh, able to respond to a situation where you're potentially in grave danger? So staying calm, giving direct instructions, uh, not being overly aggressive with folks, you know, just being firm and being clear. And then really focusing on a solution-based mindset. And th that's something that, um, apologies for the typo, by the way, I've just seen that there. Um, and that's something I place a lot of pride on when I'm out on the water with groups, that if things begin to go wrong, that I'm always figuring out how are we going to get out of this? What's our plan B? What's our plan C? And having thought about that uh, in great detail. So we're moving on to adapting to whatever situation you might find yourself in. So just to recognize that, you know, when situations like this happen, us, people are going to respond in a whole range of different ways. And that could come as quite as a shock to you. So um, that's why leadership and solution based mindsets from us as leaders or uh, those in responsible positions is vitally important. So it could be something as simple as a basic cap size. You know, we could take that for granted, get back in your kayak very easily. But what if that person gets spooked by capsizing? If they go in a second, a third, a fourth, fifth time, it can very quickly have a domino effect around the group. And suddenly you've got four or five, six people in the water rather than just one. 
So looking at self-rescue as being central to your emergency skills and being able to peer rescue, help each other out is important. Be conscious of your positioning on the water and your proximity to others. So don't let other members of the group stray 50 or 100 meters off. You need to be within a safe swim distance of each other very quickly. And one thing that I regularly come across in the water is people don't look over their shoulder to see where the rest of the group are. Um, leadership is not being about at the front of the group. In fact, sometimes when you're out kayaking, you can lead a group most effectively by being at the back of the group. So again, your training course, your local provider or club will help you in more detail with this. Now, think about other traffic on the water. Now, uh, thankfully, you know, most Irish locations, I can say in general, we don't have to think about too much traffic. But if you're in a busy harbour like Dublin or Cork or wherever it may be, other water traffic like boats, yachts, ships, etc., they do uh, pose a risk to us. So just think carefully about where you're going to interact with other vehicles or, uh, on the water. Again, just repeating the point about exposure, uh, not just hypothermia, but maybe hyperthermia, where in the middle of the summer on a, a lovely day, maybe somebody was out late last night, uh, they might have had a few drinks too many, maybe they had no breakfast this morning, they've no sun cream on, they've no water bottle with them, and um, quite quickly they can find themselves uh, finding adverse effects from being over overheating. Uh, so just to prepare for that. Now, some more serious situations and, and not to kind of devalue hypothermia. I put it into the basic one um, just to clarify because hypothermia can start off as just something very, very mild. You can recognize it earlier by all the kind of classic signs and symptoms. But if you let that go further down the road where people really drop in temperature, it then can move to becoming a serious situation. And as I said earlier on, Someone might have a medical emergency or an injury, but as a byproduct of that, because they're going into shock, they can develop hypothermia very quickly. Um, so a serious situation that would, is something that would necessitate an immediate call to the lifeboat or the Coast Guard, any medical emergency, you know, it could be a heart attack, it could be uh, an epileptic fit out on the water, you know, um, someone could have uh, anaphylactic shock from a bee sting or something like that. Um, that's something where we don't hesitate to call for help. So any form of loss of consciousness, you know, don't hesitate for a moment, call for help immediately. Um, that could be a medical emergency, it could be uh, a bang in the head, whatever it is, but you're going to need outside help to deal with that. Um, collisions with any kind of vehicles on the water, again, that's something that's going to need immediate help. Um, this is one that tends to get forgotten a little bit uh, sometimes in, in, in basic sort of kayak settings, particularly we're on the sea and this time of year when you have big differences in temperature between the land and the sea, we can develop, uh, or it can develop a sea fog very quickly and very uh, soon you're going to find yourself disorientated on the water and it could be hours if not a day before that fog dissipates. So again having your PLB and not being afraid to use it or your mobile phone. Again like I said earlier, if you get caught out in autumn, winter or springtime when the days are shorter, if you have an incident happening at half three on a winter's afternoon, you are going to end up getting caught out in uh, darkness. And then strengthening conditions. Um, and that's also something that can happen this time of year. You know, we, we typically speaking on a summer's day here in Ireland have quite calm seas in the morning and the evening. But because of the rising temperature during the daytime, uh, the coast can develop these local sea breezes. Met Aaron will talk about them in the forecast. And you can end up paddling into one of those and finding yourself out in quite strong conditions. So being able to recognize that and, uh, and get out of there quickly is important. Um, probably your worst nightmare on the water is getting separated from a member of the group. So, you know, having the leash on your um, paddle, you know, we spoke about that earlier on and I've got some other measures now in a moment to, to recommend to you. Really understanding the importance of rafting up as a group immediately if you get into difficulty and keeping everyone connected together. So important. And then that each person would have a whistle and high vis tape on their buoyancy, their paddling gear. So if they do get separated, we have a means of recognizing them and hearing them. So some smart things to do in emergency. 
we doing time wise there? Yeah, we've got about 15 minutes to go there at most. So make the call early. I'm repeating that point. It's vital, folks. Forget about your pride or the TV or whatever it is. This is a matter of life and death. Use your PLB, use your phone or your VHF and flares. Keep the group together, raft up, practice that in your fun sessions. Learn the draw stroke, learn what it means to hold on to someone else's kayak beside you. Keep your paddles together, have that positive mindset. If you end up in the water and you're fatigued, immediately clip yourself to your own kayak. Why do we do that? Well, if the sea conditions are rough, you might not have the physical strength to hold on to your kayak. If you slip into unconsciousness because of hypothermia, it will be a lot easier for us in the lifeboat or the Coast Guard to find you when you're attached to a big floating high-vis kayak. If you're not clipped onto it and you're just a bobbing head in the water, it's a lot harder to find someone. While you're clipped onto the bow of your kayak, you can see there uh, the, the guy is blowing his whistle and waving his paddle. Even if you're holding onto the bow of your kayak while you're in the water, you can still wave your paddle to raise the alarm and call for help. So that's why having your tow line or a means of connecting yourself to the kayak is important. Particularly if you get fatigued and you can't climb back on. So think and keep warm. Think about your spare gear. Maybe in your dry bag, you've got a hat and the gloves that you can put on immediately. That'll buy you some added time that'll preserve a bit of heat in your body. Think about staying warm as well. But remember, if you use up too much energy by moving, you could end up uh, burning up a lot of calories quickly, trying to generate heat, and then that will just make the drop into hypothermia even quicker. Again, coming back to mindset, you've got to maintain your positivity and consider the amount of time that you're going to be in versus the cold that's there. So, you know, in my sea kayaking sort of emergency plan, I've kind of got a golden 15 minutes where a lot of key things need to happen to ensure my rescue is going to be effective. Again, your trainer or club will provide you with more info on that. Okay, so we've covered everything in that slide there. We're kind of moving nicely towards the end. So it's important for you as well, going out on a, a kayaking trip, you know, not that we're looking for an emergency to happen by any means, but uh, in our preparations for that, we need to know what services we might be able to expect. So just very briefly to say to you that the Marine Rescue Coordination Centres, they're on Valencia Island, Malinhead and Donegal, and Dublin Airport. And if you're from the six counties, uh, they also have one in Belfast. When you dial 999 or 112, you're going to ask to be put through to the Coast Guard. You've got a marine emergency. It's to either one of those, depending on your location on the coastline, that you will be put through to. And they will be the people that will coordinate all of the other assets below on this list and your rescue. Now, I've been to visit all of those centers and the technology that they have available to them is world-class. They have all sorts of projection models that will anticipate your drift according to the tide and the wind and the size of vessel you're on, how many people there are, to give the Coast Guard helicopter, the lifeboats, the Coast and Cliff Rescues, the most accurate details they can to find you quickly and efficiently. So we have uh, four Coast Guard rescue helicopters, Shannon Waterford, Dublin Airport, and Sligo. And bear in mind, they also have a reserve one. So if any of them are tasked to another um, incident, there will always be one available to come to you. Then you also have the Irish Coast Guard Coast and Cliff Rescue Team. So maybe if you're, you're trapped at the base of a cliff and the helicopter can't get into you, maybe they can abseil down and, and help you out that way. Uh, the RNLI here have uh, stations all over the coast of Ireland, and that's a combination of inshore Atlantic 85 boats, as in this photograph here, or the bigger Aaron and Shannon class offshore boats, uh, which, which you'd see on Saving Lives at Sea and so on. So well-trained crews, uh, well-versed in dealing with paddle emergencies, and uh, all around nice people to deal with. Um, and you'll also have the Irish Navy from time to time. So if it's a, a kind of a bigger incident, where there's a number of assets that need to be coordinated, the Navy, if they're in the vicinity, will sometimes help out as well. Uh, we also have to acknowledge the great work of the Irish Water Safety Beach Lifeguards. They just started again there last weekend and will be um, on service there now for the next couple of months during the kind of summer season. 
um, they will be there to advise people taking to the water about safe practice or indeed if there was an emergency they can respond in the vicinity of that. And then finally we have the National Ambulance Service as well. It's even worthwhile thinking about where's your local hospital. So just factor that into your emergency plans please. 